So today what we're going to do is um, start a piece that is entirely visionary in content. So there is no references. Um, this is literally a vision I had. Um, and we are going to do uh, essentially the Mish technique from the beginning on this piece. So it is uh, there behind me. And so I'm going to set up the camera so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, let's get started. So you can see that I've already started this, but all I've really done here is just painted a black background and then with my casein, my trusty titanium white casein, I have um, uh, basically sketched in my images. So uh, I'm still gonna do three colors on here and you'll see what the difference is between starting with an entire red ground and then what I've done here with a black ground. And part, part of why I've done this is because this is going to be black um, or a very, very deep blue. So I wanted to already have something pretty dark going on that I'm going to build up on. But if you remember from some of the other episodes, the white is going to pick up the color, right, of whatever glaze I'm putting over this. So the areas that are white, I'm going to create, I'm going to do the Miche technique in the exact same way, um, painting with the highlights. And it's going to pick up that beautiful opalescent chroma as the layers get going. And my background is going to maintain this very kind of complex shadow that the black ground is going to give it, as you will see. So what we're going to do is um, I am going to paint on the uh, first layer of red. So I'm just using a acrylic here. I'm actually just going to use this very uh, well-loved <laughs> golden naphthol red medium. This is a fluid acrylic. I prefer fluid acrylics. I don't really paint in acrylic very much at all. I only use acrylics for underpainting 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. Um, uh, mainly because they dry fast and I can do some of these layers pretty quickly if, um, you know, I just want to get an idea out. I generally uh, will only use it for the red background if I'm doing a painting myself. Um, if I'm teaching a class or whatever, oftentimes I will use acrylics just to kind of get the idea across. But in this, in this regard, I'm going to do um, the uh, red ground. Uh, this, so this black is acrylic. I'm going to do the red ground in acrylic. We're going to go in with the white again with casein. And then I will probably switch to oil paint with the Indian yellow in the yellow glaze next. So what I am doing here, I'm going to take my nice big brush. I am going to get it nice and wet here, but not too wet. You don't want it dripping. I just want it wet. And then I'm going to dip it into the uh, red naphthol that's on my palette and make a glaze out of it. So a glaze, when it comes to acrylics, is really just a nice wet, um, uh, so you're mixing the water with the red and you're just making kind of a nice wet uh, puddle, if you will. And then I am going to just lay that on my image, as you can see here. So you see the white is picking up that red nicely. And I'll go back and kind of uh, even that out as I go. So I'm just continuing to dip into my water, making a nice red ground. Um, you can see what's going on here. The red, the white is picking up that red, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. That's perfect. What you have to be careful of when you're working with acrylics is that the, the water will pick up 
a little bit of that casing. You can kind of see that happening. Um, there's a little bit of white mixed in with my red. It's hard to avoid this just simply because um, if you're gonna make the acrylic, well, it depends on the color, but if you're gonna make the acrylic um, uh, thin enough, the paint thin enough to really create that glaze as thin as you want it, uh, it has to be very wet. And the wetness is just inherently going to pick up a bit of that white if you're doing it this way. So that's okay. Uh, we don't want to massage into the paint too much because that's going to make it worse. <laughs> you can use things, um, there's plenty of acrylic mediums that you can use that help this. So there's um, several anti-drying type acrylic mediums that you can mix in and actually use that instead of water for your uh, glazing medium. I don't paint with acrylics nearly often enough for me to justify doing that. I can, but it's, again, just not, not something I really invest in so much. So I just kind of do it this way and take take what it is, and it's fine. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're going to let that dry for a few moments, and I am going to come back in and start working with the white. So this has had a few minutes to dry. So we've got some wings. We've got an eyeball and kind of a ball of light. So I and some flames. Um, I'm going to start off on the wings and I'm going to test to see if this is the uh, correct brush for the job at the moment. So I'm going in, just kind of highlighting some of this top portion of these kind of celestial feathers, if you will. Yes, this brush has a nice kind of sharp tip on it. So uh, I've got a small brush here that I'm going to just kind of use to fuzz out this edge. and start building this up there. So it's nice, it depends on kind of what you're doing here, but you can, it's exactly the same physical painting technique, whether you're using something that has a reference or like in this case, no reference, uh, it just my mind's eye. Now, as you can see, this wing that is right here is in front of this other wing, right? But I'm going to just kind of go through, as this is really my first, I'm gonna take this as my first layer. And I'm just going to really lay in the image. So it's not going to be perfect. Um, I mean, we're going to aim for it to be as accurate, you know, quote unquote, accurate as possible uh, as far as kind of the lights and shadows goes. But let's be real, like I'm, you know, just kind of getting the feel for what's happening here. So there will be uh, some discrepancies and some things that in the next layer I'm going to probably go through and fix a little bit. But for now, I'm just laying in the 
this top layer of white. I used that initial stage of white as uh, really more of a sketch layer. And here I'm starting to really build out. Now, what is this? You're probably wondering what on earth this is. This is very different from a lot of my other paintings. Um, I tend to be very figural. I really love painting the figure. I love painting faces. Uh, painting people is super fun and painting fantasy objects is super fun. So what on earth is this strange um, spider-like creatures with eyeballs they are slightly terrifying. What are they? Well, I had a vision of, um, I've been really kind of thinking about, noodling about, feeling into the idea that the world is made up of two types of people. <laughs> Those that dream the world into existence and those that are being dreamed by the dreamers. So that's really interesting if you sit with it. Um, the implications of that are, uh, are really, you know, as a, as a metaphor, as, well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> as an idea, let's just say. As an idea, it's really, um, it's really evocative, isn't it? Because... If you fancy yourself as one of the ones who's doing the dreaming, it does feel sometimes that there are just um, actors in a way, just people that are just, um, you know, like in a movie, right? Like uh, there's kind of extras in a movie. It sometimes feels that there are just extras Uh participating. Um, there are definitely other dreamers. And this is what I've come to. This is what I've really felt as I've been doing this. It's not that if you are a dreamer and dreaming the world, it's not that you're the only one dreaming. There are other people dreaming and you can feel that very viscerally. Um, I can feel that very viscerally. So that's what this okay. is. This is the field. Uh, this is the field. And these, this is everybody. Well, not everybody. You know, imagine this is like, you know, infinity long. And when one is dreaming, one kind of comes out of the field in a different way. Oh, we've got a awake baby. So... <laughs> <laughs> probably will have to come to an end in a moment here. Um, I'm just going to kind of keep noodling away here. Hi, baby. Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi, sweetheart. Uh-huh. This? This? Oh, no. Hang on. And there we go. So this is, uh, we're going to pick back up here next time. Um, and do you see, I'm just, I'm just kind of slowly building out what this looks like. And I don't know what it looks, I mean, I, I know what it looks like because I can see it in my mind, but it's not that I can um, point at a reference. I'm just, based on my knowledge of what kind of a three-dimensionality looks like, kind of a wing looks like, kind of crystals look like, um, kind of bubbles look like, right? Because all visionary art just is made up of crystals and bubbles. Um, I am constructing uh, a 3D image um, slowly but surely with uh, the white casing over the first clay. So as you can see, I have done a first layer here of the uh, casing over the red glaze, the acrylic red glaze I put on there. There's my parrot, Mr. Sam. 
Um, and I am going to put the yellow glaze on next. All right, we're just gonna put this on quick and dirty. So this is Indian yellow, it's called. It is one of my favorite colors and for a glaze, you just can't, cannot beat it. I'm just going to go over absolutely everything to make sure I've got it. And there we go. See where everything fades to chaos. Isn't that just, isn't that just how it goes? Everything just fades to chaos on me. Sure. My medium, I have. I use Liquin, uh, Liquin, as far as I'm concerned, is, why is that there, that's weird, um, Liquin is non-stinky, and as you can see, my parrot is right behind me, and my baby is now being held in my arms, so I need a medium, if I'm going to paint an oil paint, and I always have, because I've always had pretty much always have had parrots. Um, I need something that is going to be as non-toxic as possible. I mean, it's oil paint, you know, like no one should eat it or touch it too much, but um, for me, it's gotta also be not, not very stinky. And so my, my medium of choice for the non-stinky quality is gonna be liquid. And then I, so here, here is the, here it is. This is what I use, Liquin Original. Good stuff. It is pretty non-smelly. Um, I can, it does not hurt any of my parrots. I've been using it for a long time. And then here is the Indian Yellow that I just used also. And so because it's very fresh, it's got that glare on it, but you can see you can see what it did for the piece. There we go.